what we're looking for here is the value of R sub F. From the plot, the voltage level from 0 to 12 microseconds is just V1 plus. After 12 microseconds, the voltage level here is going to be V1 plus, plus the reflection from the fault, so I'll say V1F minus, and that's propagated all the way back to the generator. So then at the moment it reaches the generator, we'll get V2F plus. So V1F minus is the first reflection from the fault, and the F indicates that it is the reflection from the fault. The one indicates that it's the first reflection from the fault. Since RG is equal to um, Z naught, the generator is matched to the transmission line, then we know that V2F plus is equal to zero. You can find that from determining the voltage reflection coefficient at the generator. As a result, we have three volts, because that's the level from our plot that we get, at 12 microseconds. So at 12 microseconds, we get three volts, and that is equal to V1 plus plus V1F minus, since we determined that this one is equal to zero. We know V1 plus, that was given here, so that's six volts, and now we just need to find V1F. We can find that, solving for that, we get minus three volts. Then, we need to find the voltage reflection coefficient at the fault, and that is equal to V1F minus over V1F plus. We can plug in for V1F minus. We have minus 3 over 6, and that is equal to minus 0.5. Now, uh, we can also write this as uh, minus 0.5 is also equal to RLF minus Z naught over RLF plus Z naught, where RLF is the total load impedance at the location of the fault. Meaning it's not RF, because RF is just the value of the resistor going between the two conductors. This is the total load impedance at the fault. If you solve for RLF in this equation, we get 25 ohms. Now you might think you're done at this point. You might be tempted to say that the shunt resistance is 25 ohms, and I've seen that a lot when these kinds of problems are worked out. The easy thing to forget, or to not realize here, is that the shunt resistor is in parallel with the remainder of the transmission line. So we have RF, but there's more transmission line beyond it. And we have to take that into account. So for the last step, we solve RF by taking into account that RF is parallel with Z naught. So RLF is equal to 1 over RF plus 1 over Z naught, and then we can solve for RF, which is 37.5 ohms. Take out your in-class notebooks and summarize in your notebook that a fault can occur along a transmission line, which would generate a discontinuity in the impedance along the transmission line, and would create a reflection. For a shunt resistance, a reflection is generated at the fault with a reflection coefficient we saw here. And we also need to use this to get the value of RF.